Hi, hello. We are early because that's how we roll here. Early rather than late. It's ish. So <laughs> we're going to be talking about Astro City today, but I'm going to wait a little bit for people to roll on in a titch. And I actually wanted to cover, there were a couple of super chats from last time that I missed because I had to dash off because right after saying that my daughter is finally sleeping through the night, she um, woke up. So <laughs> let me <laughs> read those. I wanted to say thanks to Russell Archer and to John Ty. They both asked me different questions. Russell Archer was asking if I had read slash heard of Marvel Ruins. And yes, I have. It will stay with me forever. <laughs> and John Ty was asking, did you like Superman versus the Elite? An adaptation of what's so funny about truth, justice, and the American way. And I can say... It was okay. There was, th there was like this time when all of the Superman movies were on Netflix at one point. I was like, yes, just marathon them all. And that one definitely fell into the it's okay category. <laughs> so today we are talking about Astro City Confession. I still do not have post-its, but that's okay because I took notes and they're on a separate tab because, well, you know, we're fancy today. But I realized, or rather I was informed by one of you that this is not available on the digital storefront anymore, which saddened me quite greatly. And I was like, why would you ever remove this? So I know some of you weren't able to get a hold of it, but if you were, I hope you read it. And if not, we're going to go through it and you'll see if it's worth your time to, you know, go and go on a quick, like a crazy quest to try and, uh, trying to find it. I almost said crazy, crazy. So... <laughs> I'll go through some base info about this one before we dive into it. Hi, hi, hello. <laughs> I took notes, so hold on. Let me get my notes. There we go. So this is part of Astro City Volume 2. So the second round of Astro City Stories produced. So following the ones that we've talked about, because I've talked about Astro City a couple of times on this channel. We've done some Samaritan things. But, so, this one came out in 1997, and the Confession arc is one of the first big ongoing arcs that you see with, like, the same interconnected, like, big over, like, arcing kind of thing. So, yes, it was, I'm going through my notes, I feel like, oh, yes, I need, a, like, a PowerPoint presentation set up. So, we have our writer, Kurt Busiek, we have... Brent Anderson on the art and the covers are by Alex Ross. And sadly, I, you only get a couple in here. You don't get, where's the gallery at the end? There's my gallery. Yeah. You get a bunch in the cover gallery, but where's the coolest one? There's one in here. That's, ah, uh, there's a, like a giant spread. This one's pretty good. There's a giant spread. But um, I don't think that is in here, unfortunately. And But you get all the cool references for the art back here in this hardbound, which is really, really neat. So how to describe Astro City Confession? I'm going so fast. I feel so concise today. I'm so prepared. <laughs> I reread it last night again. And every time I reread this one, I enjoy it a bit more and find new things about it to be like, oh, yes. So I guess, firstly, a brief, overview of the concept of Astro City, which is tales that take place in and around Astro City. They can be about heroes, villains, just people who live in the city or come to it or interact with it in some way. And all together, they form a giant tapestry of the world. And they're not even necessarily told in chronological order. So it's the kind of work where the more that you get into it, the more that you get out of it, because you'll see little details and cues or hints to things that are going to happen or have happened or haven't happened yet, but inform the world in some way. And that's very, very interesting. It's also a reconstructionist work. So it's very positive and like, but not to say that positive things happen, but it's very positive about heroes. It's very optimistic about the concept of heroes and heroism and building heroes up. So if you're looking for a work like that, it has that. The Confessor is often very, he's kind of described by some as, oh, he's the Batman. And there are Batman elements here, but I think that's a bit reductionist because like, while there is clearly some Batman inspiration and in, like the costume, and there's a couple of panels later on where he sits on a gargoyle and you're like, oh, hi, Batman. I hope you're enjoying your gargoyle. But there's much different things 
going on with him, even though there are some kind of ish similar themes, even so they're not really because he's not out for revenge or justice or like, you know, it's more out for atonement, but we'll get to that in a moment. So look at that in the shadow. So let's see. Boop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -a -doop -doop Oh, this one has an introduction by Neil Gaiman, which is which is pretty awesome. Do you ever have that? You have copies of a work, and even though you know they've released a new copy or something like that, you want to keep yours just because of all like some kind of special intro or something that that version has. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person who does that. Who's like, oh, maybe I'll just. Can I just slice out exacto knife out that part? And everybody will wonder, it'll be a big mystery of, ooh, this book, why are these pages missing? It's like, I just wanted to keep the introduction. <laughs> All right. So this story, while it is about the confessor, is actually more about his sidekick or the boy who becomes his sidekick, Alter Boy, which sounds kind of like a silly name and they even make fun of it a little bit when he first uh, selects him to be his sidekick and he's like alder boy he's like alder boy or bus boy you pick so <laughs> but the more you get in to the story the more the more you forget about that kind of thing and it really becomes a, a side a side bit i mean faith does matter but less so in like the alter boy sense of things so we start off in our first chapter which is with Brian Kinney, who is our altar boy or soon to be altar boy, leaving his small town. And this sets up a lot of important things that you need to know about him. One, that he's going to Astro City. Of course he is, <laughs> hence the name. But he's going to Astro City and he's going there because he's seeking out heroes. He wants to be involved in some way. He wants to prove himself and he's running away from what he feels is like the shame of his father because he's very ashamed of the fact that his father was a doctor in the small town who did all of this work and then when he died he found out that everybody was just making fun of him taking him for granted not appreciating all of the work that he did for the people in the town and so he just feels very ashamed and he feels like his dad was a fool and so he's very much setting himself out to be like i'm not going to end up like that i'm going to do something so much better so he ends up in Astro City, where he meets the Crossbreed, who are a group of um, religious superheroes who end up, they come up later and they are very influential to how he ends up thinking about some things. But he meets them, he's kind of off put by them at first, but they actually end up saving him from getting his wallet pickpocketed, which is the first thing that happens to him as soon as he gets off the bus. And he's like, welcome to Astro City. <laughs> like, Accurate, accurate. <laughs> so he settles into Astro City and he goes about getting himself a job at this bar where he knows that the heroes hang out because he's done tons of research on the, the heroes and their haunts and the history of the city. So he's really just trying to get involved. But of course, as he works here, he realizes he doesn't know exactly everything and he's really excited to learn more and more about the city. You get a nice shot here of um, Jack in the Box. He's one of the cool legacy heroes in Astro City. That's one of the great things about this is you see a lot of the heroes through his perspective. So their worlds are also expanded as you see Brian Kinney's just, some of the, he doesn't even talk to some of them. He just sees them and you get to see how he views them. And so all of that makes the city feel so much, so much bigger. So eventually he gets, uh, he does such a good job, but he knows that he's not in the right environment. His boss does. And so he sets him up at this more swanky, higher class, kind of higher class haunt for heroes, but doing the same thing. And he's there for a while. And we get our nice Cracker Jack up over here. <laughs> Cracker Jack's very Booster Goldie. He's kind of like a glory hound and all that, but he actually has a really great story later on, which is about, you know, aging and mortality and how you can't, you can't escape it forever. And that story is really great. I like Cracker Jack a lot. I like all the, all the characters a lot. So while he's working here, somebody busts on in, but he manages to save himself, which impresses all of the heroes there. They think it's hilarious. 
at first he's worried that they're laughing at him because he has this like this chip on his shoulder and this low self-esteem because of everything that happened before with his father and the like. But it turns out that they're really happy with what he did. So he's super proud. But then uh, all the other people who work with him end up being very, very jealous. And so they gang up on him outside, which is when he meets the confessor who looks awesome. I love the, the confessor's look. Like the whole, I know it's kind of like we've done like two priest Batman stories, some would say, but no, it's different. It's different, I tell you. We'll get into it. So we hop into the next chapter. We see that he is now altar boy, that they are fighting crime together and the like. No, people are like, haha, but if you saw somebody called the confessor coming at you like that, you'd run too. You would run too. <laughs> So throughout all of this right away, you can tell that something is different about the confessor. For one thing, he's drawn with this luminescence, not just on the cross, but on his eyes. So his eyes are always consistently just glowing. And you're not really sure if Brian can see it, but we can definitely see it. And you see things like he just appears, disappears, and he seems to be in a fog and he's able to get criminals to just talk to him and tell them things and the like. So, you know, he's like, that's a little odd. But he's also just really happy to be living the dream, basically. He set his mind to something, and now he's doing it. So he's going through the city, and he's also, the confessor has now set him up so that he's going to college, and he's learning all these, you know, these really great things. And he's like, yay. <laughs> he's also training him. He's training him in martial arts. He's training him in deductive, like, reasoning skills and the like. And so he's really learning a lot hanging out with him. Look at this group. You can just tell he looks kind of like, let me hide myself. So maybe I'll focus on the kind of eerie confessor face. <laughs> okay. So as it goes on, there's this backdrop that slowly becomes more and more important stories that you're hearing on the radio and through the news, but slowly they begin to pull more and more focus. And there are Two really big ones. One is that there are these murders happening up on Shadow Hill, which is the part of Astro City that is patrolled by the Hanged Man. And then there's the fact that Wing Victory and Cracker Jack, their press has never been the best, and it's just getting worse. So they're just hearing more and more stories about how you know they're they're problematic and they're doing all these things, and people are frustrated. And as this is going on, the tensions seem to be rising more and more. Here's a great scene where he's looking at himself because he heard some girls say they thought Alter Boy was cute. So he's feeling himself. And all of a sudden the confessor is just there. And he goes, God. <laughs> but it's to demonstrate to us that, well, he has no reflection, obviously, because how else could he come up behind him like that? But so Alter Boy wants to solve the Shadow Hill murders, but they're working on a different case trying to catch the gunslinger. And the confessor tells him no. And so he kind of gets into a fight with him about, you know, like, well, you haven't told me anything about yourself. I don't know who you are or anything like that. Even though he sees him with his mask off, he doesn't know who he is. And so basically he tells him here, I really love what he says to him. He's like, you want to know my secrets, where I go, where I came from, earn your answers, find out for yourself. Then we'll talk, <laughs> which I love because it's very much like he's been training him in all these skills. So show that he's learned something, you know, use them kind of thing. So he starts, Alter Boy starts trying to be more observant of the world around him, which leads him to realize that he, there's a duplicate of Cracker Jack running around committing crimes and making Cracker Jack look bad, which isn't hard because he already does that enough himself. And so he's able to catch this fake Cracker Jack only to realize that it's an alien. It transforms just into an alien right in front of him. And so the real Cracker Jack shows up and is like, oh yes, I was totally on this the entire time as well. And that of course it's Cracker Jack. So he ends up losing the shapeshifter and Alter Boy is so annoyed by the fact that Cracker Jack tried to steal all of, all of the credit that he's like, okay, you know, whatever. So all of this leads to this big escalation throughout Astro City. And ultimately, there's tension that's starting to rise between the populace and the heroes to the point where the mayor starts to step in and he's demanding all these changes from the heroes. 
And he also calls in this hilarious monster hunter, Mordecai Chalk, which is, uh, I love, I love his look. There's Mordecai looking like a cyborg Superman, got a metal arm on, got a mask, you know, just all of the things that you need and like. Oh, I love this. He looks so cool. The eyes, I love the eyes. They just look so, so eerie. This is the scene where the confessor drops the biggest clue to Brian, where he asks him, are you asking me if I have mystic powers? Which, you know, cause he's like, he's hinting hard. He's like, come on, come on now. <laughs> come on, I'm trying, I'm giving you all the clues. So this is chapter three. And at the end of this, he follows the confessor into the sh the Shadow Hill region, chasing the gunslinger, even though he told him not to come. And so he sees that all of the people are terrified, not of the gunslinger, but of the confessor, and that they're crossing themselves and all kinds of shadiness. So he very quickly realizes, I mean, when you put all of the things together, he confronts him and asks him, well, are you a vampire? Which he tells him, well done, because yes, yes, he is. <laughs> So he is a superhero vampire. And he's not hes not thrilled about being a vampire or anything like that. And you get his backstory and it's a little, it's not the saddest vampire backstory out there, but the reluctant vampire is always a little bit of a sad trope. So first we have to deal with the space battle because all of the alien stuff is starting to come to a head. And this giant space battle between the Honor Guard, which is the Justice League, essentially, of this universe, fighting these aliens, and they keep the ship, which causes all of these tensions between them and the rest of the people on Earth who feel like, no, you should give it to us. So ultimately, we also get a really good, actually, I know I'm jumping around a bit, but we also get this really good reference. Just a small panel here talking about you don't remember the 70s, which is the Dark Age. Now, it took me forever to get the Dark Age, but I finally found the uh, the Dark Age version. I'm like, yes, because the Dark Age, because the, the history of Astro City also kind of parallels the eras of comics as well. So that's a very interesting element. So you learn the confessor's backstory, which was that he was a priest who was working on this giant never ending cathedral that was never fully finished. And it's also where he set up his base now. So he was part of trying to get that built. And he used to visit the sick people in Shadow Hill, the very same people who are now afraid of him because there are legends there of what he actually is. And he saw a woman while he was up there, you know, doing his rounds and he he lusted after her and fell for her and went to see her. And so he feels that this is his punishment because he describes it as he went to sin and then it turned out she was a vampire and she turned him into a vampire. And for years, he just couldn't handle it. He, he hid, he tried to just keep to himself and just stay there forever. But ultimately when he saw the heroes emerge, he decided that he was going to come out and try and do something good, try and make, you know, the world a bit of a better place, despite of what he is. So you get some things here where, you know, Alter Boy asks him, but you're a vampire and you're wearing a cross on your chest. Doesn't that hurt? And he tells him that it does. Like, it's just a constant kind of self-flagellation that he's going through, especially because then Brian asks him, well, have you killed anybody? And he just begs him to not ask him that because obviously he has because he is feeding on people. So, you know, he has to deal with that. He has this constant guilt about what he is, but still tries to go out there and make a bit of a difference. And it's here, it's already been happening, but you're starting to see the, that the confessor is paralleling Brian's father and the way that Brian feels about how his father moved through the world and why he did the things that he did. So that's starting to cause some friction because Brian's never dealt with that. He's never fully dealt with that anger that he has towards his dad. So basically there's the one question of why did the confessor t take Brian? Why, why Brian specifically? You never get a full answer. Basically they settle on, Maybe it's just because he was lonely and wanted somebody to talk to, but it's never, you know, not in this story, like fully fleshed, fleshed out kind of thing. So everything's getting worse. The mayor wants the heroes to register. The heroes refuse to register, 
which sets things into a whole extra level. The monster hunter comes out of where they sent him to try and stop the murders, and he's all jacked up. So that's not great. And at this point, they're capturing heroes. Some have died. It's just really getting to a very, very tense atmosphere, except for the Samaritan who's still around doing everything because that's how he rolls. If you remember our video about the Samaritan, that's how he rolls, constantly working all the time, no matter what. So all of this is activating Brian's anger because he's seeing the same thing that he saw with his father in his mind, basically, that there are these heroes, they're trying to do the right thing. They've done the right thing for so many years for all of these people, and now nobody's defending them. Nobody's standing up for them. And so he's feeling very resentful and very bitter about that. Like, he's not sure if he wants to keep being altar boy or not. So he's still... Why did I save this page? See, I don't have post-its, but I saved this page for a reason. Why? What did I really like about it? <laughs> Now I don't remember. I didn't even write a note on my own, like, thing. Gah, useless. <laughs> uh, absolutely useless. All right. So at this point, they now are employing special troops on the ground to round up the more difficult to catch heroes. And with the way that... <laughs> <laughs> the way that he's getting around not being caught is kind of great. So they have this really good conversation here. And I love, I love the eyes every single time where basically the confessor tells him that it doesn't matter what people think. What matters is that they're doing the right thing and that they're helping people. And why is he doing this? Is he doing it for public approval? Is he doing it for the fame? Because he like Brian needs to assess what he actually wants to get out of this. And the confessor tells him that the people who love them and now hate them, they're still the same people, that both sides of their face are true. It just depends on the circumstance and that he really shouldn't judge them too harshly for it, which is something that Brian really cannot, cannot accept. So they have this huge argument. And, but he tells, but ultimately he tells him something that happened a little before, which was that somebody approached him and very strongly hinted that he knew who and what the confessor was, but he didn't tell him right away. And he's not sure why he didn't tell him, but he tells him during this fight. And so because of that, the confessor is able to finally put all of the clues that have been there, if you read this together and realize what is going on. And that, and then so you have this great denouement. Spoilers for the denouement. <laughs> and where he goes out, it's not even fully dark yet. So he's just risking, you know, like he's risking all the things, not even fully light yet. And he goes and he's caught live on, on camera, revealed to be a vampire in front of everybody. They've got crosses. They try and pin the murders on him. He's burning and, and then they stake him. They stake him right there in front of everybody. And he went knowing that he was going to die. But in his last moments, he shoots back on the mayor to reveal what he's figured out, which is that the mayor was one of the shape-shifting aliens and that the aliens had purposely been using all the things and the underlying tensions to just sow all this distrust amongst the people so that they could move in, so that they could remove their heroes, so that they could implement their own forces and completely take over. But now, of course, it's been revealed that that's what's going on at the sacrifice of the confessor. And it's so, so sad because the confessor never gets the recognition for what he did. He's always kind of like, oh, he's the vampire and, you know, bad and all of this stuff. So again, it really hammers home this exact same message for Brian again. So then we have the fight. Let them fight. We fight. They fight the aliens and he's saved by the crossbreed. With the, he has a really nice talk with the crossbreed. Where's the thing that they say? Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -da. Yeah. So they basically reinform and reiterate the same thing, which is the importance of doing what's right, no matter what you know people think or say about you. And that just because people may make fun of you or say bad things about you, that doesn't take away from the things that you're doing. 
So he still needs to reconcile with the fact that now things are things are getting back to normal. The mayor is back in place, the real mayor. The people are starting to be happy with their heroes again. The hanged man in this great Cthulian panel stops the murders on Shadow Hill, which it turns out were not connected. They were a separate thing. And I love the hanged man so much. Just so ominous. I love that he's so ominous, but it's also like a symbol of comfort to the people of Astro City, which is awesome. Ultimately, where it ends up for Brian is he makes peace with the life his father lived and how he felt about it. And the fact that he was fighting within himself, that ultimately he does feel the same way. He wants to be a hero to do the right thing. And it's no longer about like, being better or proving anybody wrong or anything like that. He wants to stand for something. And ultimately he ends up taking on the role of the second confessor. So there have been two confessors. There are, there are lots of legacy heroes in Astro City. But the fun thing about the second confessor is because the first confessor was outed as a vampire, people think that he's a vampire. And so they bring all kinds of vampire nonsense to the fights. They're like, okay, steaks, okay, garlic, okay, crosses, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> so it's a bit of an advantage for him and he plays into it. He keeps the same, like, he keeps the same kind of operation stuff. He can't stay in the same base because they, you know, found it. But so a lot of the later adventures, when you see, they try and sort of parallel the confessor, the Samaritan winged victory. And so when you're seeing that, you're seeing the second confessor is the one who's interacting with them for the most part. But it's just, it's a great story. It's very much a coming, it's not just a coming of age, but like a coming to the realization and acceptance of things within yourself. Because I know it's like time to get deep. I feel like it's, this kind of everybody has parts of themselves that they might not you know love the most but there's this moment of really great happiness that can come when you accept those things about yourself and accept that okay like this is this is me and it doesn't matter what people think or whatever and i like the mentorship between him and the confessor in this i do like that there's that kind of distance between them and I think that makes a lot of sense given the fact that the confessor is a vampire and doesn't interact with a lot of people and doesn't really want to let a lot of people close to him and really it seems like what's driven him to even take on a sidekick is not just wanting to like you know expand the crime fighting world but also just loneliness you know <laughs> like needing somebody to talk to and potentially seeing something in Brian that would respond to this kind of training I also like the whole that he made Brian figure it out for himself, even though that does bother him. He's like, why didn't he just tell me? <laughs> but he did all kinds of vampire stuff in front of him all the time. And so when they do have that conversation, Brian even tells him, you know, like, oh, you let me see this. You let me see you. You didn't have to, but you did. You wanted me to know this, which of course he did. E. Capone, thank you very much. I thought Confessor came back to life, but it's Alter Boy. <laughs> he leveled up. He leveled up to getting to getting the costume. And there's, I love legacy stories like this, where you see the importance of the mantle they're taking on and why it means so much to them that they're taking it on, like what it means for Brian to be the new confessor. And I think that's really, really important. And I love that this is also told and it's kind of like a pocket story. Like there are so many other heroes in Astro City and they're also dealing with the stuff going on. But I love that the focus is narrowed and on these two. And I feel like it makes the story so much more interesting for it because you could go and, you know, retell this from multiple angles, but they don't. And you just move on to like different stories in Astro City. And I absolutely love that. I went through this so thoroughly because since I know that it's not up there anymore, I wanted to give a pretty decent synopsis for those of you who may not have got the chance to read it or may not get the chance to read it, at least for a while. When I first was looking for this, it was out of print. That was years ago, but I found it one day. I remember I was going from like bookstore to bookstore. So whenever I was in a town and I saw a bookstore, I was like, bookstore time. I would go in and look, you know, 
elbow the people looking for Batman out of the way and be like, ugh, Astro City. <laughs> so, and I finally found, I remember I just grabbed it. I saw it. And you know, you're knowing you're trying to be cool and it's like, oh, I don't, you know, whatever. And you yoink, you yoinked it off. The, I held it. I was one of those people like walking through the store, like holding the book, like no one take it from me. <laughs> So I was the same when I found Dark Ages too. I was like, it's mine. I didn't even care that it wasn't the same size or anything like that. I was like, it needs to be in my life. So I was, you know what? Maybe they'll reprint it again because every now and again, they just reprint it because that happened. Like a bunch of them suddenly reappeared. So hopefully that happens. Or you can go and do like the game of the game I'm playing with Rawhead Rex of, oh, I see you have a copy. You know, let me see if I can get it. Brandon Bradley, thank you for the super sticker. Fist bump to you too. <laughs> oh, my daughter started doing fist bumps and she saw Big Hero 6. Now she does the explosion. She goes, <laughs> it's super duper adorable. Oh man. The cool thing about this too, like I was saying, is that because you see all those other heroes as well, this adds to your understanding and perception of them. One of the cool things about the fact that you get the stories of the Samaritan first are the fact that when you see him later on, he comes across as very aloof. You know, like the others don't know a lot about him. He seems kind of almost cold. And so, but we know that he's not because we've seen, you know, we've seen what's going on with Asa or Asa. I'm never sure how to say it. You know, so that that kind of aspect is cool. Just like how now we know this. So when later on we see some criminals who are about to take on Jack in the Box and like the confessor shows up and they pull out their, like, their stakes and stuff, it's funny because you know that that's not the right confessor that they're trying to get with them, which is great. Jojo, I think this is a great intro for people to get into Astro City. You get a strong story arc and you get a taste of the whole universe. Thank you very much for the super chat. And yes, I agree. But I feel like that... With Astro City, because of the formatting of it, I feel you can really jump in almost anywhere. And that's one of the things I love about it. I think the only one that I liked reading in order because of the impact it had was the story of the Silver Agent, which made so much more of an impact going into it from seeing the statues of the Silver Agent and people referring to him as their great shame and just the sadness of the Silver Agent. But then you get another story only a little while later, that's like the silver agent betrayed us. And so you, then you're left with this mystery of how did we get from the silver agent betrayed us and he was executed. We killed him to the silver agent was our greatest shame. And now here are all these memorial statues. And so then when you finally do see the whole story of the silver agent come together, that's really amazing. I'm missing a couple of volumes of Astro city. And so now I'm just like, Oh, I gotta go get, <laughs> but I already spent my book money this month, my budget book money. I spent it on Zima Blue and other stories. So I have to accept the choices that I made. I'm very happy because I love Zima Blue. And I finally found a copy of Zima Blue and other stories. And I was like, yeah, Zima Blue. So science fiction, it's a science fiction kind of month. <laughs> Welcome to Geek Town. I have an extra copy of the trade paperback that I'll be giving away once I have 200 followers on the short message site. So yeah, if you want that, follow Welcome to Geek Town. They've got an extra trade paperback. And you know, these are like gold when they go out of print. <laughs> we'll be we'll be bartering, you know, like years later, like I have Astro City confession. <laughs> I'll trade you. Uh, I've got to make sure. Uh, so I'll trade you and then, you know, that kind of thing. Oh, can you not say Twitter? That's so weird. I don't even know what's going on with the filters on YouTube anymore. They keep opting me in to all these filter programs. And I go in the back and it's like, you're in this. I'm like, I did not even check mark this. What is happening? They always, I think, opt you into like the sensitivity networks where they're like, we don't want you to be offended. I'm like, I'm offended that you opted me into something. I didn't check. The, like if I cared that much, I would go and like check the box. I would do it <laughs> if I was that motivated. JLK, thank you very much for the super sticker. That is very cute. I'm almost, I almost did the cringiest thing. I almost said a uh, kawaii. I say it anyway, but I was like, oh, kawaii. <laughs> That's the kind of mood I'm in today. Huh. So how many of you were able to get a hold of this? And if you did, did you enjoy it? Like if you were able to read it for this, did you enjoy it? Did it make you want to, to explore more of Astro City? I have a friend who roasts me all the time for liking Astro City so much. I'm like, no, it's really, 
I like the optimism of it. I really do. I love, you know, I, I love the whole like heroes are good aspect. Like a deconstruction is fun. I love that too. I mean, the Watchmen's right back there, but I like this too. You need both in the balance, you know, the balance to be struck. Mr. Another, thank you very much for the super chat. Good afternoon. I really appreciate you and your comic channel. You introduced me to great comic gems. Thank you. I'm always so glad when I hear that people have found something to, to read. I feel like I say that every time, but I'm like, yes, I'm so happy. When, when people are like, I found a new comic to read. I've been reading some random stuff lately. I'm working on a video right now that nobody asked for at all. And I'm like, here you go. <laughs> there you go. Let's see. Oh, dinosaur sprinkles. I found a couple on, um, I found a couple used on Amazon, but that was Amazon Canada. So I don't know. <laughs> What's going on with that? Sometimes it's so sad when you're on the site and you think you found it and you're like, this is not in your region. I'm like, how dare you? How very dare you? So yeah, if you can find this, it's great. There's also a really good hanged man story at the end of this. And this is one that actually gets a lot of play and people talk about how much they enjoy it. And that is the nearness of you. And this is a this is a really bittersweet, bitter bittersweet story about. There's gonna be all this run through it since we're here. It's basically the story of a man who the love of his life has been wiped from existence because there was a giant cataclysmic event and the universe reset, and so she just didn't exist. And but he remembers. And it's just the sadness of the knowing that there was this, this love and this life that just never was. It just wasn't, you know, and there's, there's something so terrifying about that, you know, because how can you even properly grieve for a thing that, you know, was, but isn't, it's, you know, sad. <laughs> so sad. I know, right? Oof. <laughs> I know I saw a bunch of you. I was like keeping my eye on the side chat while I was recapping. I saw a bunch of you still being like Batman. I don't know. I really, I really don't get that much. I mean, I feel like there are some obvious like comparisons, like the costume and like the whole like I am the knight. But and it's the fun to play with the idea of Batman as a vampire. I mean, there are even those else worlds where Batman is a vampire. I have that. I have those. Are they right back there? Can I reach them? Or are they really far away? They're further away. No, they're right there. Elseworlds Batman. Yeah, they're right there. There's the um, there's the Dracula stuff. There's some really good art in that. That's why I have those because some of the some of the Batman as a vampire art, especially in the last one, is horrible and amazing. But it's even that is different than this. They go much more for a, like a demonic kind of thing with that. This is there's just an inner kind of light that's shining from him, which is very interesting. Rage Demon. Thank you very much. I have a Deathstroke comic. It's Gods of War Volume 1, and I'm really liking it. Have you read it? I don't think so. I don't think I have. I want to get into a lot of the um, Deathstroke, the Terminator <laughs> comics, though. I've been reading through a bunch of uh, older stuff. I guess since you're here, I can... <laughs> He's a literal Batman. <laughs> I see you. Um, I... So I'm doing a really random crossover next. Like that was like the Easter egg in my community post where I was like, do you like crossovers? It's because I'm talking about one because I am the queen of a random crossover, just crossing over my, oh my God, wow. What poor phrasing <laughs> of appearing on my comicsology dashboard. I mean, like that sounds random. I'll read that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gordon Cooper. Thank you much for the $5 super chat. I appreciate it. What is everybody reading right now? Cause I I'll just flip back and forth. Actually something that's missing from the shelf. And then I haven't brought back upstairs is get ready for blasphemy for some people. I'm about to be extremely scandalous. Um, before Watchmen, I own all of them. I've, uh, I've read them all. I was rereading them the, uh, the other day. And so they're all downstairs and I need to bring them back up. And my daughter got a hold of one of the covers at one point and it's torn and I'm so sad, but it's not, it's like, it's not torn enough to replace, but I'm like, it's no longer beautiful. <laughs> like how is moving castle. I don't want to live in a world that can't be beautiful. <laughs> so, but yeah, <laughs> 
Oh, so I saw someone saying they just started um, Justice League uh, International. Did you see that there's going to be a blue and gold comic? Who saw, who saw there's going to be a blue and gold comic? So Blue Beetle, Booster Gold. I am cautiously optimistic because the theme is that it's going to be about them tackling social media, which I feel like is a great premise for Booster Gold. Like that just slots right up, you know, Booster's alley. But I'm worried that it might have a very like, greetings fellow kids, you know, kind of vibe potentially. And I'm like, oh, please, no, I don't want it. <laughs> I'm always so scared that it's going to devolve into one of those kids get off your phones and off the TikToks and like, you know, <laughs> like, no, every generation is different things that they're into and that they enjoy. And the evolution of social media is very interesting because it's like, it's different for each generation that encounters it. And also each person who uses it. Some people have a great time and some people end up in horrible hell corners. So, you know, <laughs> it really depends. <laughs> oh God. Foggy Broom, thank you very much. Not reading anything right now. Nothing right now, but I've recently read reread Lover's Quarrel. I love Lover's Quarrel. Lover's Quarrel is the one I was talking about with the uh, the Cracker Jack story where it's about them having to deal with aging and how they, him and his girlfriend are dealing with it because her name is just, I could go get it, but no. You know, are, are dealing with it in very different ways with her being more accepting of the changes that are happening and him not being able to handle it and really trying to cling to still doing the stuff they're doing all against the backdrop of their relationship, which is really cool. Rainbow Warrior 71, thank you very much. Worst slash best before Watchmen. I feel like that's going to be different for everybody. Uh, I have ones that I really like. And then there are some where I'm like, why is this? I don't, boo. <laughs> I think the ones I enjoy the most out of all of them are probably the Dr. Manhattan one. I really like that. And that's a combination of story and art. The Minutemen, because there is so much to expand upon with them. So I really like that one. And the ones I like the least are probably the comedian one is up there. And also uh, the Ozymandias one from a storytelling point, but not from an art point, because I love the art in that one, but from a story point, less so. So, but they really vary. And I know, you know, I know some people are, they shouldn't even exist at all. I'm like, you can really, you can take it or leave it. You know, I don't, I can still take the Watchmen as a separate entity on its own. I don't feel the need to necessarily apply those. Like now these exist and they are the truth of what happened. I'm like, I just find them interesting to me. I almost read them kind of like in universe expandatory, like fanfics in a way. You know, because I have a very positive relationship with fan fiction, so I have no problem with that. I can do them all, like, put them all in, like, their own separate boxes, you know, kind of thing. So, yeah, I don't mind reading that kind of extra content. And I could tell there was an excitement from the people writing it. Like, they were really, like, into it. And I know some people still feel like, no, but the company screwed him over and all of that. But, you know, to each their own. I really like the movie, too. I know, like, shock and awe. I, oh, yeah, that's another, like, <gasps> I own the ridiculous, like, how long is that cut? Like three and a half hours or some nonsense. Like <laughs> I um, I own that cut. I'm like, do you need the motion comic that doesn't even need to be in the movie to be in the movie too? And I'm like, yes, please take my money. <laughs> I'll sit here for like eight hours. <laughs> oh man. Oh, are you enjoying Shadecraft? I'm so glad. <laughs> Every now and again, I'll like, I'll take a, I'll take a leap because a lot of times with new comics, I'll wait until there are a couple of issues in or wait till they're done before I like dive on board. So I can see a couple of the preview panels. You see where it went because you can glean a decent amount from the opening preview panels of where it's gone. And sometimes you wait three issues and you're like, nope, no, thank you. I don't want it. Send it back. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh. I'm checking to see what y'all are saying that you're you're reading and stuff. Oh man, so much, too much. I've been so excited for this though. I've been like hype to talk about Astro City for days. Like I got that the like, oh, I get to tell them about Astro City. I hope they like it. <laughs> I got so excited. I was rereading it last night. I have I kept having to remind myself to take notes 
because I kept just like, woo, you know, falling into it and just reading. And I was like, no, I need to take all the notes. And did I cover all my notes? I feel like I, I feel like I did, but let me check. I don't have two screens. So I have like all these little tiny mini tabs that are just also open. There we go. Let me scroll down. I took notes per chapter. So did I cover all the, I think I, I think I did. I think I almost had these like security notes, like just to know that if I needed to, I had notes that I could look at. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that there's the whole heat wave thing. All of this is set, you know, on a heat wave, which is always a nice thematic element to add when you have rising temp like tensions, you can have them parallel the rising temperature kind of deal. Like, oh, it's getting hotter. And so is the action. <laughs> so deep. Hashtag deep. <laughs> oh. And there we go. I just, oh yeah, I took some notes just about the in the environment. Oh, and I took a note about the page of him sitting on the gargoyle. That's really funny. It's like, look, he's on my gargoyle. I love going back over your notes while you were, while you're reading something. You're like, oh yeah, I thought that was important. And then sometimes after you're like, why did I even think that was important? Like the post-it I found in here. Why was that in here? <laughs> I don't know. Oh. Tony Lone Fight. Thank you very much for the super chat. Is there a racial minority comic like the indigenous comic, like the one Marvel did for DC? I love your channel. Uh, like, oh, you mean like how they did those uh, those Pride comics? They did a separate line that was more uh, original stuff, I believe, if I can recall the the name of it. But there is a kind of uh, of similar thing or similar concept. I thought you were asking if Astro City did it. I was like, Dale, let me tell you about Jack in the Box. <laughs> I love Jack in the Box. Jack in the Box is great. And you have all these great messages about like fatherhood and like how the the area and like his, his, his ethnicity like play into him being a hero and what that means to him and his family and how they pass on the legacy. And the Jack in the Box one, I think that's where he's in Dark Age. Dark Age 2. And there's a couple of other of other ones let me you know what let me quickly let me just quickly grab the dark age oh bootleg cereal i love your name thank you very much <laughs> video about fantastic four meeting the beatles oh, don't put those crossovers into <laughs> the world like that mr and other thank you very much have you heard of comic iniac by badideacorp.com i have not tell me about it while i grab the uh dark age oh my god dark age Ooh. I grabbed it. Yay. Okay. Dark Age. Oh, let me show you the cover. You guys get hype for the cover of the Dark Age. Look at it. Look at the cover of the Dark Age. I love it. Oh, and then on the back, you have the people there. Uh, they're charging against the Honor Guard. So you got them on the back, which is awesome. So good. Is the Jack? Yeah, it, it is here. The Jack in the Box story. I knew it was. There's another really good one in the uh, the later run that deals with the next generation of of Jack in the Box. No, there are tons of like heroes of color and stuff in the Astro City stories. There's everybody in the Astro City stories. Like everything happens in Astro City, and I love it. I love it so much, but particularly in this issue, there's a lot of that going on during uh, the Dark Age issue that leads up to the uh, the modern age. Because remember, I told you that the coming of the Samaritan ends the Dark Age. So like all these things, you know, kind of tie in together, which is awesome. I'm so excited right now. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> Astro City. <laughs> Matthew Salaveria, thank you very much. Review the Marv Wolfman Raven comics from, uh, you know, what's funny? I was actually just reading that the other day. I went through this phase where I reread, the, remember they released all those like minis for a little bit? There were like a bunch of series like in between the transition period. Raven had one, Mira had one. There were a whole bunch. And I was like, I will read these random transition comics. <laughs> They're, who are these for? It's like me. They're for me, me, myself, and I. <laughs> That's who they're for. 
Oh God, I love Astro City. I guess it's good that I just put Astro City on the thumbnail since I ended up referencing more than one. Look at their swamp thing guy, the green man. Look at him. I love him so much. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, the silver agent. Sad time. Oh, I love that. I forgot this cover. Check that out. Look at that neon hero action. So good. Love it, love it, love it. There we go. Oof, I'm trying to see which other ones I have. Well, I have all of them. On um, Dark Age 1, which is not have as cool of a cover. The Tarnished Angel. Do I have Lover's Quarrel right there? Or do I have that downstairs because I was rereading it? Oh, it's right there. Cool. Astro City is one of the few where I actually have them all in. Oh, where is, where's the cat? You probably saw the, um, the cat uh, in the thumbnail. He, uh, he left, you know, <laughs> the one time I was going to let him stay because he was being so good. And then he was like, nope, forget it. I don't feel like it. <laughs> so he is not here. It's fine. Oh, I shook everything. He is not here. He's probably downstairs bothering his brother. For I have two cats. So gray 12, 13. Thank you very much. If anyone ever wants to read comics minorities, I always suggest the Dakota verse. If you can find it, icon needs his own movie. I feel like these days, like with every, like, you know, with so many movies being made, you never know. <laughs> it might happen. Sometimes, you know, I've stumbled across a list the other day that was like, all of these adaptations are coming and they're made from comics. And I was like, I didn't, where is the marketing department? Because I did not hear about half of these at all. And then, you know, that was a, okay. That was a sadness that I had. So I did the resident alien video because I really love resident alien a lot. And lots of the comments were like, Ooh, I like the show. I had no idea it was a comic. And that just, it made me a little sad that like, yeah, I know it's the show now and like it's the show's time kind of thing, but you would, it would be nice to put it more front and center that like it came from this, like this is the thing that it came from. And it just made me a little sad to think that it's so divorced from it. Like not just that they're different because it doesn't matter that they're different. Like an adaptation can be vastly different. You can find entertainment in both, but just the fact that there was so much like, oh, I didn't even know this was a thing. And I was like, I don't know. Like, I'm glad that the author seems like he's really happy with it. But I just, I don't know how I would feel if I wrote a comic in some parallel universe and I got adapted and then like nobody even know, knew that my comic existed. Like, I'd have some feelings. I'd have some altar boy feelings. <laughs> e. Capone, thank you very much. The world needs a steel reboot. Yes, it does. I love Steel. I thought Steel had the coolest look. I the the full like the full silver cost like the full silver metal costume and casing, and then the the big symbol and the big hammer and the cape. That looks great. The the contrasting cape against the silver body. I love everything about it so much. Mister Another, thank you very much. And yet, it's a sci-fi horror miniseries. Well, hello there. About the sentient com supercomputer that helped create the first atomic bomb. That sounds very interesting. I will definitely check that out. I have my my little thingy open so I can write it down. Hold on. Let me type that down. You can hear the typing so you know it's real. I've been reading a lot of horror stuff lately and then I had to stop because I read something that really freaked me out. <laughs> I was like, ah, not like on a, on like an existential level of like, does anything matter? And I was like, it's time to hop back into lighter genres for a little bit. And I watched some documentary about people's clothes on Netflix. Cause <laughs> I was like, I need joy and happiness after the dread of what I just read. But it was good because you know, if it makes you feel like that, you know that they did a good job because <laughs> because then you know it's like well that really elicited some strong feelings good work <laughs> oh steel would be cool to see i would just love more like that the reign of the supermen i actually really enjoy the reign of of the supermen i like i think i like all of the four alternate supermen i don't know how i'm gonna feel about the like john kent era of superman that's 
looming on the horizon. God, there's so much, you know, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna surmise if I get to it, the punchline stuff all in one video from the Joker comic that's going on. Oh, and I need to tell everybody that Nocturna is, is back that, um, cause I did not care for the description that they gave for, um, Nocturna, I have um, I have feelings and I will share them <laughs> with you. I have, I've got a fondness for her after doing so many videos about her. I'm like, how dare you? <laughs> Joe K, thank you very much. Have you read DC's new Swamp Thing comic? Thoughts? I have read the first issue. I thought it was pretty decent. I think it needs to see, I need to see where it's going to really commit. But I really like Rom V as a, as a writer. So and I always put so much effort into saying his name correctly. Before I did the video about Catwoman, train heist future state. I remember I just, I found an interview with him and just listened to it over and over again, because there's this uh, interesting combo accent with how he says it. I'm like, I can do this. I can do it. <laughs> like, I will say your name correctly, sir. <laughs> you know, for once, <laughs> aside from all, where's the thing? How do they describe? I can't share my screen because I'm just using the, the regular kind of thing, but I can go to comiXology and see if I can find how they describe Nocturna in my Suicide Squad. Because I am reading Suicide Squad because I'm doing, uh, I'm looking at all the Peacemaker stuff. And since he's on the squad, that means I'm reading the squad. Do they have her intro page here? No, they don't. I'm not logging in. I'm not that committed. I'm not that committed to it. <laughs> oh, man. There we go. There's a lot on sale right now, by the way. Cause you know, that's my gateway, like intro, you know, let me find them. Where's, where's Lover's Quarrel? Cause actually, let me show that to you. Let me see. Oh, there we go. Lover's Quarrel. Charles, thank you very much. Could Zatanna, Zatanna, me both be adapted as a magical girl anime? You know it could, but I feel like that anime is probably already out there. I feel like that already exists for someone somewhere. Lovery Squirrel. Look at that cover. Isn't this so good? This is um this is when it was being published by Vertigo. I love Lovery Squirrel so much. There we go. Oh yeah, he gets this, he gets this ridiculous suit to try and still be able to, to compete. And I love, I love the look of Cracker Jack. They gave him, they give him a kind of like Errol Flynn, like smarmy kind of look. That's in his second appearance though. In the first appearance, he looks entirely different and they just never address it. There is like, oh, you know, shh, don't think about it. <laughs> Don Perk Edge, thank you very much. You should check out. Why is that symbol there? <laughs> Alvin Omega by Jim Shooter. <laughs> Solar. Oh my God. Wow. Embarrassing. Send me home right now, except I'm already there. Put me in another corner of this room that I apparently never leave. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Let me write that down too. Oh, let me write that down too. Alpha Omega. The typing. Do -do -do -do. Do -do -do -do. There we go. Oh, Foggy Broom. Thank you very much. Who would you like to see play a live action Cracker Jack? I don't know. Okay. I think that I've fallen out of the cultural zeitgeist of um, who is popular and who is not. I am clinging by a thread to like who are the popular up and coming people. So I don't feel like I am qualified to cast a person who would truly resonate with all of the ages. Because I would want it to be a person who like would get people excited and then hopefully they would mention that it was from a comic book and then people would go back and they would reprint it. And that's the dream because for me, I'm always like, and then they'll reprint it. And other people are like, I want to see it on the big screen. And I'm like, if they put it on the big screen, maybe they'll reprint the omnibus. <laughs> I'm playing the long game, thinking several moves ahead. It's like, and then they'll put it on sale or on that rack in the front and then I'll be able to go get it. Or I would if we weren't in lockdown, but I'll be able to buy it online. <laughs> It'll be a beautiful, magical time. They still haven't done that with Resident Alien, which makes me so sad because they still haven't even released the second half in the omnibus form, only the first half. And some of them are like impossible. Oh my goodness. So uh, 
I need the Muppet face. I try not to do that so much. Face like a Muppet. <laughs> oh, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> oh, Nicolas Cage for all the things. I love Nicolas Cage. Ooh, clobbering times. I like your name. Thank you very much. Hi, love your vids. Love Astro City. Thanks. Ooh, and live long and prosper. Yes, we'll live long and prosper back. Boop, I can do it. Unlike McCoy. Take that, Dr. McCoy. <laughs> Displacer Bear, thank you very much. Are you enjoying the Invincible Animated Series? I am. I am. Um, the decision they made for Machine Head's voice brings me so much joy. And I'm like, ooh, I want to do something similar, but now I'll be totally stealing it. But I love it where they um, where they gave him auto-tune for when he speaks. And so everything he says sounds like he's about to drop a diss track is my favorite thing. It's so good. And because they don't overdo it. So not everything sounds like it's being sung. So you have this really, it creates this really funny effect that I really enjoy very much. <laughs> and I, I do enjoy like some of like the changes and the pacing and stuff they've done. I think, I think they've done a decent job of adapting it because pacing was always one of my issues with the comic series itself. So, you know, sometimes adaptation can really, you know, pull things together in different ways. So, so far I've been enjoying it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there we go. I still have these to get the last one. I need to get another shelf to fit everything else on. Just, you know, oh, I thought I heard Alvin coming to join me, but he's probably too busy bothering Theo. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not cool anymore. I'm not the cool hotness. <laughs> also, we had to get um we had to get clippers for them. And so that's been that's been a time. Thankfully, they're very good. So they, you can sit there and you can trim their nails and it's not that big of an issue because otherwise, whew, no, thank you. <laughs> oh. Somebody I saw just said Tom Hardy Cracker Jack. I actually don't hate that. I don't, as long as they don't make him put on any like voices or anything. I'm like, listen, I know a terrible voice. Trust me. I am committed to doing as many of them as possible, but you need to be able to hear them. I remember for Bane, my friend and I actually went to see Mission Impossible, which we did not care about, see the first six minutes of, you know, Dark Knight Rises. And we were so hype. And they played the first six minutes. And it was like, for you. And we were just like, what? And then they were committed for a while to not ADRing it. And then everybody complained. So they did. I remember I did that voice once and someone told me to just speak into a Pringles can. And I was like, then I got to go buy some Pringles and I don't want to. <laughs> I'll get somebody else to buy me Pringles and <laughs> then then we can deal with it. <laughs> what was the other one? There are a couple of things people have told me to speak into to get like a nice Bane or Jason Todd helmet voice. But I think I've got I think I've got those pretty good at this point. There are a couple of voices that I've been practicing that I just haven't found the right person for. And I'm so stoked for when they eventually do show up. And I'm like, yes, now is your time. And then maybe, maybe one of them will be Adrian Chase. I don't know. Maybe Chase will get one of those voices when I finally do the, uh, the vigilante two <laughs> thing. It's going to take a while. Vagabond Ninja. Welcome to the fanboy stud level. Thank you so much. Also, I like that name. Vagabond Ninja. There have been some great names <laughs> lately. There are a couple of people I have who even like managed to snag the first name. Like somebody is like Agatha Harkness. I'm like, dang, I, I'm surprised that nobody else <laughs> had grabbed that yet. Isaac Koff, thank you very much. Are you reading the new Flash arc? Not yet. I am not. I have not. I'm not keeping up with the Flash right now. There's just, oh, there's too many and they're so expensive. Like which ones do I have right now? Okay. Hold on, I'm on Comixology on this other tab that you cannot see. I mean, I'm doing Green Lantern. I'm doing the Joker. I'm, hold on, get past my sales tab because that's my default tab. This is right to the sale. I'm like 99 cents, where are you at? <laughs> oh, um, Nightwing, of course, there we go. And also the Legends of the Dark Knight, but that one's a bit cheaper because they're doing another digital thing of that. I really love the first run of Legends of the Dark Knight. The second one, not so much. And this third one so far is falling again to like the eh 
category. It's too bad because the first run of that series is so amazing. So, you know, maybe, I don't know, it'll get better with these anthologies. You never know. But some, look, the Daily Digital first, like, you can tell sometimes with the art that they had a much tighter, like, schedule, obviously, because, you know, Daily Digital first. <laughs> That's a lot of a lot. When you, I don't begrudge anybody that, because when you don't have time, sometimes things slip through the cracks, and you don't even, you don't even realize, and that comes, that goes for anything, you know, just time pressure is a very, very real thing. You know, it can be very intense. The price is really getting out of it. <laughs> it's intense. It's, uh, it's, it's intense, you know? <laughs> oh, it's the kind of, it's the kind <laughs> oh yeah. Not keeping up with the flash. That's true. <laughs> that isn't a bit of an accidental pun, isn't it? <laughs> Plus there's all this indie stuff that's out there to uh to check out as well so <laughs> there's just there's just so much so much out there and that on top of all the other things you're doing or at least i'm doing i'm listening to all these audio books i always want to have a segment where i'm like these are the things i'm doing that i'm really hyped about i'm listening to clara and the sun which is a really amazing audiobook i'm really enjoying it so <laughs> Let me see. I um oh, someone's asking about my uh, my collection. I uh, I actually did some unboxings a long time ago. I have a uh, oh my god, what it's called? I have a playlist. I have like eighty playlists. So, firstly, like if you're ever looking for anything, check my playlist tab because there are so many playlists that I have that you know might have what you're looking for. And I have a live stream playlist, and in that. I have, I also have a whims playlist and the unboxings are in one of those. They're, they're one of those. When I first moved into this house, I did a bunch of taking most of these out and I filmed most of it. And the collection hasn't expanded too, too much uh, since then. Most, there's actually been a big manga um, expansion because they released all of these like nice leather hardbounds, as you can see. I'm saving up for uh, Acura as well because they have a giant uh, like anniversary casing of all of them and there's some like Edo stuff like the horror ones that I'm looking to get at some point so you know there's a there's a lot <laughs> there's just so much out there constantly you really have to pick and choose like I don't know how those people who like read everything like I don't know Trigun fell down that's so sad Trigun fell you know I think Interview with the Vampire knocked it over it's been falling down a lot, you know, lately. So I think that there's some vampire shenanigans going on back there on that shelf. Got her the wind because it's in the attic and we need to open it now because it's hot. So we'll see. That was so high pitched. My voice just cracked. That should be a voice I give to somebody. Like the pimply face kid from like the Simpsons. Just really high pitched. Oh, somebody's asking about the um, Batman Fortnite books. Did anybody read that? I need to, I don't play Fortnite. So it's not something that I'm like, this is a thing that I need. So <laughs> I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pretend that I play Fortnite when I don't. So yes, this is, um, this is today's drink. It's not a coffee today. Already had more coffee than any human should. So <laughs> We're getting that um, brand representation, you know, sponsor me bubbly. <laughs> In my local comic book shop, it's sold out. I don't even know if my local comic book shop still exists. I mean, at this point, it will have been closed for over a year. So we'll see. I made a promise to myself that once everything does open up just to support you know, our local businesses, I will go in if it's still there, even though I hate going in anywhere and talking to any people in person. I will do that. I will do that to support. No matter how cringy or awkward it is, I will leave with an item. <laughs> that is my goal to myself. Like I will go there and I will be a person who purchases an item. <laughs> at least one normally those stores have a nice big um trade paperback section which is always where i go because sometimes you've got stuff that's out of print that you know nobody's just picking up because they don't know about it and then you can find some you know find some gems back there i always enjoy doing that 
I don't enjoy talking to people, but I enjoy looking for gems. <laughs> Charles, thank you very much. With all the great work you put into covering comics, how do you avoid feeling burnout? Like burnout of comics or like burnout of work? <laughs> Um, probably because, uh, I think what helps is, you know, the fact that I am a mom. And so most of my time is dedicated to parenting and doing all the house things, you know, taking care of the girls, making sure the, the house is clean and they're all set and they have everything that they need. So this is very much my, my thing that I do to relax. So I get to read the comics and work and it's something that I get to do for me, like some people, you know, they like to go to a spa, they like to kick it in a bath with a glass of wine or whatever it is people do. And this is, this is my thing. This is my relaxing thing. I find this very relaxing. <laughs> I enjoy it. So it doesn't feel like work, you know, like reading through all those issues and stuff. It doesn't feel like work. It's exciting, you know, to me at least. Like, so I guess that's how I avoid it. Maybe it would feel different if it was like, you know, nine to five, sit down, read all these comics. Then it would probably be like, oh, comics. So <laughs> there we go. So I think that's, what do we think of Older Boy's costume, by the way? I can't believe I never even brought that up. You know, it's like this, yes, accepted choir boy outfit. Here we go. <laughs> what do we think about Older Boy and his choir boy outfit? <laughs> like I said, I don't know. I just kind of accepted it as <laughs> it, you know. I think you'd see all kinds of costumes, you know, in the costume hero realm. I'm st I went back to the page with the paper in it. Oh, can we see it again? Yes, you can. You can see it as many times as you like. It makes me feel like I'm actually doing a better job of presenting this stuff. Where's the, where's a good shot of it? When he first comes out in it for the first time. Let me, hold your boy. That's is that their theme? My god, oh dear boy, actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf. And there we go, it should be here. It is. You see him up in the corner? There he is, bask in the costume, bask in it, and tell me what you think of it. <laughs> oh, Vagabond Ninja, thank you very much. CC, ah, Casually Comics, that's me. Your enthusiasm and insight for comics is contagious. Greatly enjoy your commentary. Your delivery is awesome and funny. Thank you very much. I mean, I think I'm cringy, but I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, I think I've like achieved peak mom joke level and I'm happy with that. So like me and then my husband with the dad jokes, I'm poor children. It's gonna be, you know, <laughs> they're gonna like join a math camp or something. Be like, we had to get away from the nerdiness. We hate it. We only play sports. <laughs> Oh man. Ooh, tiny manticore. That is a good observation. I like how the mask is an inversion of the confessor's hood. It, yes. Oh, I like that. Drop in all kinds of, you know, this is why it's fun to do it together because, you know, we all notice different things. Their costumes, you, yeah, you're right. They complement each other very well because you have the dark and then the light and it's just, it works very well together. And I do, like I said before, and I'll say it again, I love the little ethereal touches around the confessor to, you know, let you know that there's something a bit off about him. I also love this note. I didn't, since we're just pointing out random things, after Brian finds out and he goes back to talk to him and he can't find where he is. He's left him like this angsty cursive note, you know, like Brian, the North Tower. And that's where you get the him perching and sulking on a gargoyle panel, which is, I think, the most Batman panel in this. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> He's in there. In my head, I was just hearing, you know, Nicolas Cage from A Vampire's Kiss. Just, you know, I'm a vampire. I'm a vampire. <laughs> just going through. <laughs> Spoilers. He is not a vampire in that movie. <laughs> Love that movie so much. Hmm. How many volumes of this? Oh, there's a bunch. Are we up to 16? I'm not sure. I'm a bit behind, which I really need to catch up on that because apparently if things are going out of print, I'm going to have to, you know, do some fancy maneuvering to, <laughs> to get maybe a couple of them. Let me see. Ugh. 
I'm checking. I'm literally going and checking right now on our bookstore site. Indigo. Indigo books and music and lifestyle, because that's what bookstores are now. Lifestyle stores. Take me to the books. My friend's keyboard is getting in the way. Mmm. Ooh, there are a couple of these I don't have. And they're out of stock. Oh, oh, oh. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna have to <laughs> do some things. <laughs> no! I thought I had more time. I'll find them. I will find them. I'm committed. Astro City is the kind of thing where I would spend a little bit extra to get those used copies and stuff because it does mean a lot to me. I really, for me, these are comfort like reads. I just enjoy them. They're just fun to read for me. Like all the stuff that I actually collect and keep now is stuff that I enjoy reading and would reread, except for again, those couple of things that I hate that I'm hoping I'll like at some point. But for the most part, it's all stuff that I genuinely enjoy. And Astro City is something that I really, really enjoy. It's one of those things where you, when you think about things that you have to give away, then you can, you know, it's, it's never anywhere near the top of the list. Like sometimes I'm like, okay, that, 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 but never these, never these. <laughs> single issues. I'm not a big single issue person personally. It's just not for me. I know some people really, really love it, but uh, for me, not quite so much. So which ones am I missing? Okay, so what am I missing? Uh, 17. I'm missing volume 17. Because I have reflections, right? Yep, there's reflections. Okay. I will... Oh, so annoyed. <laughs> I'm going to obsess about this now, you know? Like, we're going to get off of this. Whenever we finish, I'm going to be like. <laughs> oh. oh, hi, Sasha. I'm Aiden from New York. I love your content and you inspired my passion for Stephanie Brown and why I'm now reading the Batgirl solo series starring Stephanie Brown. Oh, yay. I'm glad that you're enjoying it. I'm very curious to see what's going to end up happening with Batgirl. The Omniverse stuff for me has been... Okay, can we can we have a brief Omniverse chat for a minute? So I did the Starfire retrospective, right? And in that, we briefly touched on the fact that there have been some changes to Starfire's backstory over the years. So at the start, we had a very villainous, evil Blackfire who you know sells her sister in slavery, sells out the, the planet for herself, for power. She only cares about herself. And then you have the new version where it's all like, oh no, she's trapped. She's tricked. There's nothing she could do. You know, she's just kept as a figurehead. So there's two very different characters, obviously. So then the omniverse model is that like, we can pick and choose all the things, but it's like some things I don't feel like reconcile. I'm like, how do we, how do we reconcile those two things? I'm like, that's like, there's some big work to do there to put those two things together and would you even really want to because like if you like one or the other like there are very different reasons for why you would like one of the characterizations so I don't know I feel like that whole like everything it doesn't work when some of the characters have such intensely different backstories which is different than the DCU thing which is where the Starfire series comes from where it's kind of like oh these series are kind of a bit doing their own thing but this is like because for example in Teen Titans Academy it seems like you have a Nightwing and Starfire thing going on but then in Nightwing's comic it's like you have a Nightwing and Barbara thing going on and so it's just very I don't know like as you can tell by going on like Astro City I love the interconnected canon I like the work I like the you know Ooh, how does this fit? And of course, not everything fits. It's not going to, you know, especially not after something that's been going on for this many years. But I like the attempt. I like the I like the effort. Like I think that's really cool, you know. So I I don't know. I don't know. I guess I'm you know I guess I'm lukewarm on it. <laughs> I guess I'm lukewarm on the, the concept uh, a little bit. Whoop, dropping things. 
Mr. Zesty TV Gaming. Thank you very much. Hey, I was wondering how you feel about Invincible Comic and the new show. It is my favorite. Oh, that's so I mentioned this a bit earlier. I am enjoying the show uh, a lot. I like the comic and I think it's fun. I've read the whole thing, but I do think that there are some pacing issues and some dropped plot issues. That is the Cliff Notes version of my feelings about Invincible. <laughs> As as two dollars. Thank you very much. DC has been so confusing to read lately. I gave up. Uh, I can't say I blame you. I mean, I I will never. Time to pick stuff up. I will never. <laughs> I won't. Like I will always kind of like stick with it. I really enjoy it. And even this, I find fascinating. I'm just not enjoying it as much as the interconnected canon. But I still find it interesting. So it's. I'm very interested in where it's all going and how it coalesces. And I like to keep my toes dipped in because when you, when you dip out and you try and come back in, it's like, that, that, that was a good, like, kind of phase. <laughs> then you have to, you know, figure out, you know, navigate a bit more. Whereas when you're at least kind of semi quasi still in it, you know, and that like, I feel like some of the stuff is definitely trying, you know, like blue and gold is clearly like, we heard that you like this. So, did I forget to vote again? Did I forget about the DC round robin again? <laughs> if I forget all the way to the end, I'll just do a quick like update of like, hey, this one, and I totally forgot about it. <laughs> oh, Mr. Zesty TV Gaming, welcome to the fanboy stud level. Thank you very much. <laughs> We've got um, I'm gonna do another behind the scenes video pretty soon. I think I'm probably gonna chat about that that comic that I own that. Why can't I like it? <laughs> I was inspired because I saw a bunch of like interviews lately where everybody was like, this is my favorite comic. And I was like, it's happening again. It's happening again. It happened before and now it's happening again. <laughs> like it's been decades and it's happening again. There we go. I think it's time to update the book that's a sample back there. Maybe Diana, Princess of the Amazons, will move and something else will take its place. We'll see. Maybe I'll just put a random book there. Zima Blue Shows. If I, I should get another Astro City and put it there. That's what I should do. I should success. I'm already planning in my head, like I'm going to be successful in finding these missing volumes. I'm going to find these missing volumes that I don't have. I'm going to put them there in triumph. <laughs> oh. Oh, you see, you probably said I found my Gur Funko a little while ago and Gur joined the rest of them back there. I'm very selective about the Funkos that I get because there's just so many. I am now on stream going to look for these because that's how much I care. That's how this is. This means a lot. Here we go. Come on. Come on. <gasps> Yay. Um, that meant I was successful, by the way. <laughs> it's right there. <laughs> Yay. I found it. Yay. <laughs> Happiness. Oh, good. Oh, good, 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 good. Oh, and now something triggering. Ooh, the first, and not real triggering, the first Dark Age thing in hardcover. Mm, so they would match. Don't even look at that. Stop looking at it. It's not real. Oh my God. Oh wow, there's a chronology on Kindle? No, forget that. I will piece it together by myself. Thank you very much. Okay. I can pre-order that. There we go. Okay. I found things. Things were real. <laughs> Ah, there we go. Oh, when is the next Superman's Girlfriend Lois Lane video? Probably pretty soon. Probably pretty soon. There are a couple that I am reading right now that I really, um, in, they're so ridiculous. It's, it always is ridiculous with Superman's Girlfriend Lois Lane, but there have been a couple of special ones that may need their own their own attention. There's some time travel shenanigans. There's just some uncomfortable stuff. And of course, there's still a couple of marriages that I've been saving 
you know, you go in and out of moods of like certain types of videos, or at least I do. And so I always save them for when I'm really excited about them because that's the best time to, uh, to do them because it's, I feel like people can tell, you know, when you're, when you're just doing it to do it versus when you're like interested. Oh, then of course, you know, sometimes you're just tired or something and people are like, I can tell that you hate it. <laughs> I can tell that I see into your soul <laughs> and all of that stuff. I really, you're just like, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> oh. All righty. Lois Lane marries the confessor. <laughs> You know, watch it be one of the better relationships out there than, like, some of the ones we've seen, to be honest. There we go. Yes, I'm ordering this. This is totally normal. And then it'll get here, and then it'll be in the back, and it'll probably take a million years because all of our stuff is very, very closed up here right now. Let's see. I will find it. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 There we go. Huh. I know. Riveting. Watching somebody click on a screen that you can't even see. <laughs> oh. Let's see. They keep up. Oh. So have I sold you on Astro City? Are you are you now going to go and, and check it out? I think some of you are, but oh, I can't believe how much of it is out of print. It's one of those things, like sometimes, you know, if you have it and you you can splurge on it and it's not gonna like put you behind or anything, I would grab stuff when it comes out because like sometimes it just vanishes into the ether. And that's always a bit of a of a sad time. It's not like a real deep sadness or anything, but it's more like, oh, that's disappointing, you know, kind of <laughs> kind of feeling, not like any life altering sadness or anything like that. Mild disappointment. There we go. That's the emotion, I think, when, um, when you know, the stuff, <laughs> when you can't find the stuff, articulate. Very, very articulate. Mm, once I hop off, I'm probably going to uh, finish editing the video that I was working on for, for you guys, because always constantly on the YouTube grind. You got to be, but it's, but it's, you know, I think it's, I think it's fun. Ooh, and uh, oh, that's another thing that's really, uh, that's coming up soon. I've got a couple of uh, interviews scheduled. So that's really um, exciting and fun. And I'm really looking forward to uh, to doing those. And one of them's going to have a little uh, giveaway in it. So that's really exciting. I've been working on it for, uh, for a long time to get it to come together. So I'm super stoked uh, for that. We get to talk about a couple of like Kickstarters and stuff. So it's going to be, I love talking to people. I, you, I know it's like, you, like you said, you, I'm like, I like digitally talking to people. <laughs> it makes sense. Parasocial interaction is very different than, you know, face-to-face -face interaction. So <laughs> it'll be good. I'm psyching myself up from now. It's like a week from now and I'm like, it'll be good. <laughs> I'm willing it into being. I'm speaking it into existence. You know, the secret and all those books from years ago that really actually make you feel terrible if you read them. <laughs> oh. Mr. Another, thank you very much. Will you cover the DC Marvel Amalgam universe? Maybe. I mean, some of that stuff is really interesting. And but here's the thing. If like if I did, I think I would avoid talking about Dark Claw first, because everybody talks about Dark Claw. They're like, Dark Claw, Wolverine, and Batman together. I'm like, yes, but so much other stuff happened as well. You know, like there are so many other things that happened there that were interesting that I think warrant just as much attention as, you know, Dark Claw. <laughs> I think people just like saying Dark Claw. Isaiah Harris, thank you very much. Hey, Sasha, just, wa just wondering, have you read the question series by Dennis O'Neill? I just finished and I'm shook. <laughs> I've read a little bit of it. I've read some of it. I haven't read all of it. I'm still looking for the perfect gateway, you know, the perfect gateway question comic. 
it might end up being the ones that I picked up the other day that are over there, the um, the Huntress and stuff ones, or it might be the solo series. We might go all the way back to talk about the interesting connection between that and Mr. A. Like, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to get to the question. That is the question. But, um, <laughs> the disputes just drop. Like, everybody gets out. Jump out your window. Like, no, that's too much cheese. Can't even deal with it. I like the question a lot, though. The, the question is a character I enjoy. I like I like mystery comics just in general. I, I mean, who am I kidding? I like most genres of comics. I just enjoy comics as a medium very, very much. So I'm willing to give most things, most things a shot. I've read some interesting, <laughs> interesting things. <laughs> oh, there's a bird that landed on my window. That was terrifying. It started chirping. It sounded like a person talking. Like, no, none of that. I've been reading too much horror stuff. I cannot deal with any of that. That was terrifying. I'm so sad that my cat's not here. <laughs> so scary. Oh, I don't appreciate it at all. Mr. SDTV Gaming. One more thing before I go. LOL. How you, can you do your video intro? I always do it at the start of every video. <laughs> Sure, I have it memorized. <laughs> Greetings, comic lovers, and welcome back to Casually Comics, the channel where we chat all things comics, from views of comics new and old, to history, to anecdotes, to really wherever our whims take us. <laughs> I went into uh, TV announcer mode for a minute there. <laughs> oh, man. What's the strangest comic I've read recently? Ah, uh, ba da ba da ba da. Vampirella meets. Reanimator, probably. I mean, it's not the strangest in terms of con, like content or anything, but it was very like, huh? This is the thing that I'm reading because <laughs> I love Reanimator. So <laughs> I love Reanimator. So I was curious. I was like, I need, I need more Herbert West in my life. I will do this. <laughs> oh. There we go. Oh, <sighs> you know, I say it every time. I also say the outro uh, every time as well. I try and vary it a little bit. There's always people who are like, who make that like joke, like the dirty minded joke, which is funny because like, I'm normally a pretty like, you know, I can live in like gutter with the best of them. But like, there's some who are like, oh, like while you're down there, ha 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 ha. And I still don't get it. I'm, you know, I thought that I had, I thought I'd mapped out the gutter. I mean, I get it. Like I get what like they're implying, but like, you know, my mind doesn't go there. It just doesn't. It's nice to see that there's some innocence left in here. So <laughs> it's good to see not a lot, but a little bit. So, <laughs> but yes, I think that we have, I think we've covered, you know, a decent, a decent amount of confession. I, I, I'm probably going to go and like hunt down these ones that I'm missing, to be honest. I'm probably just going to like hop off and do that and then edit. But yeah, <laughs> we should not outstay our welcome with each other. You know, we need to be able to miss each other. There we go. <laughs> Keep it special. I do still um, want to do, um, I still want to do like a bunch of like random streams whenever I can. Like they might be short, they might be longer, like whenever it can happen, I'll make it happen. And then of course, like we'll keep doing these because I, I just, I have a lot of fun like covering these. these. Of course it's different. I don't get to go as in depth as I would like sometimes, but because it's all off the cuff and whatnot, but you know, I enjoy it. Great. 1213. Thank you very much. Well, before I start work, I just wanted to say I've been enjoying the content since you were on the old channel. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I'm enjoying making it and I'm going to go and make some more. I'll finish making that before I do the other thing. And <laughs> I will see all of you again very soon. I'll have a new vote up soon for the members to pick the next book and we'll stream when we can. And of course, there is more content coming very, very soon because I can't stop, won't stop workaholic. And I will see all of you. This was a lot of fun. Bye-bye.